let's implement the Spring Boot Starter GraphQL for Spring Boot. We're going to create one query. We're going to create one mutation. We're going to implement that in Spring Boot using the official dependency. And that's our goal today. I'm going to try to keep it simple, minimalistic, and short. First thing we're going to be doing is adding two dependencies to the pump file. And those two dependencies are Spring Boot Starter Web and the Spring Boot Starter Graph QL. Once that is done, make sure to refresh by pressing Control Shift O or pressing the little button that appears in the upper right corner once you have added these. Or you can right click Palm, go to Maven and just reload the project. Anyhow, once that is done, we, that means we have now GraphQL functionality inside our application. Just, just by that, doing that. But we need to add some configuration in order to access the UI we are going to be testing this with. So in our application YML, not properties, YML, we are going to add the GraphQL configuration we need, which is the spring GraphQL dot graph IQL dot enable and set that to true because the default is false. In here, we can set other configurations as well. We can even set the path you want the interface or rather the UI to be accessible from. The default path is slash graph IQL, but I'm not gonna do any other changes here. So let's start by creating our little recipe for GraphQL. This little recipe, which is named a schema, in our case, uh, of a type graph QLS, I think, we tell our application what we are going to be providing to the outer world. And this is important because if you don't add this, running this, you will not give you access to the UI or the graph IQL. So in the resources, we're gonna add a new directory. We're gonna name this graph QL, and this is important as long as you keep the default properties. You can change this in here as well. We're gonna create a new file named schema.graphqls. Now the name in front of here can be anything. It's gonna load it. However, I'm gonna name it schema to be more descriptive what it is. So in our schema, we are gonna set up a type query, and it's going to return a field name hello and return a string from that. And while we're here, we might as well add a mutation. This is going to be a type mutation, and that is going to be the named uh, world, which returns a string. But we want some input data for this. So I'm going to add an input data named name, which is also a string. Which means we expect input data named name, which is of a type string, and we expect the entirety of this to return a string. Once that is done, we have set up Graph IQL, we set up GraphQL, uh, and we have set up the recipe for what we want to serve to the outer world. However, we have not implemented this yet. We can start this application right now and run this and call these queries right away. But what's going to happen is we're going to get null from this and null from that. So let's skip to the good stuff. Let's create a controller. I'm going to name this the uh, GraphQL controller. Now, if you wanted more or had a better name, I would recommend something like, you know, a use case here and then name this GraphQL controller. Because if you just name this a controller, it, it, it's less descriptive, you know? And just naming it GraphQL the, the, the controller is not enough descriptive. It's too abstract, it's too grand. So let's just name this Hello GraphQL controller. I guess. So on this class, we're going to annotate this, the controller, and we are going to start by creating a function. And the first function is going to be representing the query. And the way that works is we're going to name the function the same as the field name. The return type is going to be the same as the string here. Public string Hello. And it's going to return 
Hello. However, this is not enough. We need to annotate this. This is going to be a query mapping. And that makes this work. This is done. This query is done. It's going to work now if you run this and, and call the GraphQL uh, hello. However, if you want to change this, let's say you don't want the name to be hello. It can be hello one, two, or something. I don't know. Then you would have to add a name here named hello. Because this hello, or possibly this hello, if this is uh, not there, represent this. And the return type, you know, the return type. But let's not do that. Let's just uh, keep it simple. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you have a really good reason for that. The names themselves should be descriptive enough. It shouldn't just be, you know, account. It should be get accounts if you want to, you know, get accounts. Uh, enough about that. Let's uh, create our mutation then. The mutation mapping query um, annotation is used here. And the same rules applies. We have to return a string and name this world. However, if you remember, we are taking in some data here. And the way we can do that is by adding a argument annotation type string named uh, name. And then we're just going to return hello and the name of that name. See, so if I were to run this, and go to port 8080, which is the default, slash graph IQL, and press enter, we are getting the graph IQL interface. Now, it may not look exactly the same for you. It may have some boilerplate text there, some nonsense over there, I don't know. Just remove this, uh, go into docs, and take a look and see what we can do. Here we have a query and mutation. And by clicking this, you can find out what you can do. You can also just use the auto-completion here, which is dying to for me <laughs> for me to choose something. Uh, so let's just do that. Let's create a query. And let's use the hello type. So we don't need to do anything else other than that. But let's uh, prettify this a little bit. Let's hit play. Now, I don't know why it removed the query, but... Uh, by running this, it, we, we see now we're returning the word hello. So if we were to do the same for the mutation... And comment this out... We also need... Let me prettify this. We need the name. The name is going to be uh, Ivan. And that's it. Now we have passed in the value Ivan into the we passed the argument Ivan into the parameter of the function, and then it is its magic and returned it out to us again. Hello Ivan. I mean that's pretty much it. Uh, 